As we talk about function notation, we'll, we'll start by thinking about what's called a relation. So a relation, or, or sometimes maybe a relationship, but a relation is essentially just a set of ordered pairs. And what ordered pairs do is they relate an input to an output, like one to five, two to seven. And this one, you can kind of see a little bit of a pattern. There doesn't have to be a pattern. There doesn't have to be anything like that. There, there can be, but um, it can just be seemingly random. It can actually be random as well. But basically what a relation does is it takes this set of inputs, like one, two, three, five, those, notice those would be like our X values in these points here. And it maps them to some, some outputs. 5, 7, 9, 14. So 1 is related to 5, 2 is related to 7, and so on. And the collection of inputs is called the domain, and the collection of outputs is called the range. And it's kind of nice, domain range, you alphabetize them x, y, you also alphabetize them in the same order. So you can see in this that I have this collection uh, that everything here goes to one thing there. Now, a, a function is a particular type of relation. A function has some specific requirements. And they are uh, basically that each input is associated with exactly one output. So notice one goes to five, it doesn't go anywhere else. Two goes to seven, it doesn't go anywhere else. So this is, this is a function. In other words, if you tell me what the input is, I can tell you the output is always nine. Like if the input's three, the output's always nine. So this is a function. So if I think about a function like in this sort of notation, or maybe a relation, I should say, in this sort of relation, if I had something that looked like this, here's my domain, here's my range, and all of these inputs went to the same output. Think for a sec, would that be a function? And the answer is yes, that is a function, because each input individually is associated with exactly one output. They all go to the same output. That doesn't matter. It is still it is still a function. The problem is, if I think these are my inputs and these are my outputs, is when one input might go to multiple outputs. In other words, you can think like a, a broken vending machine is not a function, or a misloaded vending machine is not a function, right? If I push if I push the the button for milk, and sometimes it gives me a milk. And sometimes it gives me a soda that's broken. That's not a function. So a function, each input is associated with exactly one output. And here's a, here's a thing to think about maybe. Um, I'm going to have two machines. And in the first machine, it's going to input a, a name of a person. And the machine does its whatever it does. And it spits out uh, the name of this person's biological mother and the other machine goes the other way if you input um, a, a person's name it's going to output uh, the name of anyone that person has given birth to so one of these is a function and one of these is not a function and hopefully you can see that this one is the function this is a function because each person each name you put in will spit out exactly one biological mother. But the other way, if you input someone's name, sometimes it won't put out anything. That's okay. That, that could still be a function. But uh, sometimes you put in a name, it'll spit out one person's uh, name. But it, like, if, for example, if you were to put my name into there, uh, it wouldn't pit, output anything. But if you were to put my mother's name into there, it would spit out both my name and my sister's name. That one input would have multiple outputs. That's still a relation, but that's not a function. There's a little bit of notation. So if I go back to this original thing that I called G, um, I could write something like G of two equals seven. And notice what this is saying. Um, this function G, when I input two, it outputs a seven. Like in this in this uh, notation, whatever's in here is just the input. Like G is this machine. I don't necessarily know its its inner workings, but I know that if I shove two into it, it spits out a seven. So that is that is the notation for functions. So I have two different functions to find here. One of them is f of x is equal to seven minus two x squared. So notice x. This is the input spot. So this 
is just a whole holding the input. So if I were to say something like, uh, what is f of three? If I wanted to evaluate f of three, this is saying take the number three, x equals three, and run it through this machine that I called f that goes seven minus two times that input squared. So it just becomes some evaluating, seven minus two times three squared. So this would be seven minus two times nine, uh, seven minus 18, which is probably negative 11. And uh, you know, how about if I were to go f of negative three? Well, negative three squared is nine. See, this will give me the same answer. That'll also give me that negative 11. It's still a function, right? Um, because the input only goes to one spot, even though these two inputs go to the same output. Um, and if we write it in this form, we're, we're telling you it is a function. So I have this function here now, g of a equals the square root of a minus four. And instead of an x, we used an a, but it's still just holding the input spot. So if I said, what's g of uh, five? Five goes into the input spot, square root of five minus four is so the square root of one, which is one. Great. You know, and I can plug anything I want in here. If what if I said what's g of b? Well, b is just the input. It just goes into the input spot. It would be the square root of b minus four, and I can't evaluate that anymore. If I go back to this f one, if I said what is f of x plus h? Well, my input is x plus h. That is going to take the place of that x. So it would be seven minus two times plus h squared, which I could then simplify uh, if, I, if I wanted to, if I, felt, if I felt like it. So these functions, it's kind of interesting. Um, this one, if I plug in, any value that I plug in is going to give me a unique value. Like, there's no other way for me to get one from, from this. 5 minus 4, there's only way to get one way to plug something in and go something minus 4 is 1 and get 1. And this, so this is true for any number here. So this, notice that, that this, every input goes to exactly one output and every output is mapped back to one input. It only goes from one place. If this happened, it's, it's called one-to-one, -one, which hopefully makes sense, you know, every, in one-to-one -one, inputs to outputs. This function, we can even tell from, from the entry that we did, three gave us negative 11 and negative three gave us negative 11. And that's okay, like it's still, it's still a function, three and negative three, they both went to uh, negative 11. But this is, this is a function, but it is not one-to-one -one because this output came from two different inputs. So one-to-one -one is just something we'll talk about when we talk about inverses, when we talk about undoing these. So I have this table and I'm gonna change this, see how it says X and Y? We used to see in a table like this, I could, uh, maybe I'll name this table uh, H. So I could say X, and then I could say the outputs are H of X. It's a terrible looking H, I'm gonna redo it. So this is just a lookup table. So if I asked you what was H of three, or what was H of 12, um, you could tell me, you could look it up. X is the input, so when X is three, H of three is nine. When H is 12, uh, h of 12 is 12. See it right there. Is this one to one? And the answer is no. Because three goes to nine, seven also goes to nine. This output comes from multiple inputs. It's still a function. If I asked you what h of 10 was from this table, we can't answer the question. 10, according to our list here, is not in the domain. It's not one of our possible inputs. So we'll just say we can't evaluate it. Now I'd like to think about some graphs. So each of these um, are some relationship between X and Y, inputs and outputs. And I'm curious, is it a function? And remember, in a function, each input, each X value, is associated to exactly one output Y value. So like this X value here, so look at this spot right here, boop. That x value is associated with that y value. And I can tell 
like this is a function, but I can tell that this is not a function. Do you see how? Here it is. This x value, any, uh, there's a lot of them on this one, boop, has one, two y values associated with it. Right? Like this input has two outputs. So we can do what's called a vertical line test, right? Just take a vertical line, just grab it and move it across the whole thing. And if it, uh, maybe I'll just do it with a ruler, just move it across the whole thing. And if it only touches it once everywhere, it's a function. But if it ever touches it twice, anywhere, even just once, that means it's not a function because you have an input that's associated with two outputs. So this one, vertical line test, do, 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 only touches it once each time. Yep, that's a function. This one, seems good, seems good, seems good. Nope, not a function here. And on this one, we have an input that's associated with like three outputs. So not a function. All right, uh, give the assignment set from this section a try and message me or, may, or uh, post questions in the forum.